Hey guys, Derek here. I know it's been a long time since I've uploaded, uh, so I'm just kind of going to wrap up everything that's been going on lately with uh, FPS and kind of games in general, but more primarily towards FPS games and, and what's gone wrong and what used to be right and how to fix it and why people haven't fixed it. <laughs> um, so we're going to kind of go through a little bit of uh, backstory on, on where we started and kind of where we're at now with these FPS titles that's come out. Um, going to be more of a talking head type of video so like nothing's really scripted just talking podcast ish format if you want to call it that i got one of our old iron sight montages in the back and then another video on cue um just in case it goes that long <clears throat> but ideally not um so basically uh what fps games have been feeling like lately like lately and what we're going to be covering is from the moment kind of we started like streaming and having fun again in fps games to where the heck we're at now and i'm actually going to start a little bit before all of that even um so like i myself uh just going back to nostalgia road a little bit i guess um played my first fps on pc uh i think it's exactly when counter-strike source came out i'm not sure when that was i believe that was my first fps game um, but going back to like really old days back on like windows 95 windows xp you know pinball 3d um, going back to games like that, like obviously much simpler times, um, getting dial-up internet, like going through, you know, all those stages that, you know, some of us may have gone through on growing up around PCs, um, playing games on, you know, getting our NES hooked up back in the day with Duck Hunt, the Super Mario, to, you know, N64, which we were freaking out at uh, when we got that as a, a Christmas gift as, as kids and, you know, the excitement that uh, we get with those type of, you know, presence and games back in the day um you know getting like super mario 64 tony hawk pro skater all that type of stuff we used to to freak out and have just an incredible amount of fun back when these games weren't um nearly as um advanced as they are now and they've kind of advanced in the wrong ways and that's going to tie into fps games as well um but yeah getting all those games from n64 to to ps1 the gamecube ps2 um, so on and so forth, Xbox 360, and, you know, that's basically where we're starting is, you know, games from back then. So, like, Counter-Strike Source and its simplicity. Um, I absolutely loved CSS. That was the first game where I actually, like, took on trying to learn how to play the game, um, practicing aim a little bit, like, learning, like, how to, you know, line up your crosshair to do, like, one digs, um, playing Call of Duty 4 on the Xbox 360, and then eventually buying it for PC in 2007. Um, so I played Counter-Strike Source and, you know, that game was fantastic and, you know, obviously Counter-Strike is the number one most played FPS game on Steam still to date and we'll touch on why I think that is. Um, but then Call of Duty 4 came out, played that through Xbox 360, got all the classes with their gold guns, bought it on PC back in 2007. The PC version of the game was made with PC in mind and this is why I think Call of Duty 4 uh, still, like, if it had a <laughs> player base, which I guess it kind of does, and, in, you know, it's not, it's ease of use isn't there anymore. You have to, like, get, like, a certain version, community version of the game to even play on servers anymore. Um, but that game, it had a dedicated server list. You pick where you want to play. It's completely, you know, random people that you're going to play with. You pick what server has low ping, what map, what mode, and it was thriving back then. So it was just, you, you just play whatever you want, whenever you want. Um, you wind up joining the same server each time, each evening, and find the same people on. And the game, the gameplay of Call of Duty 4 was just very balanced, especially on PC. Um, if you watch any pro mod tournaments or anything like that, mainly you're going to see AK-74U, AK-47, um, and then, you know, whatever scope that you want to pick, the M40, A3, or the uh, R700. And it was really balanced that way. Um, everyone pretty much used in public lobbies stopping power. So that evened out the game uh, to the point where if you didn't use it, you're kind of at a disadvantage unless you maybe ran UAV jammer. If you want to be one of those guys, maybe throw a smoke nade and try to sneak around everybody with a suppressed SMG. That was a lot of fun. Um, but the game ultimately was pretty balanced. Um, and that's where I, I feel like that game was known as one of the best, still known as one of the best Call of Duty's ever made. And we have to look back to simplicity of that game. Um, and then, you know, Counter-Strike... Uh, Source, same thing. Simplicity with that game. Modern Warfare 2 comes out, and the game is so wacky that it just worked. Um, there's nothing... Like, they weren't going for a safe bet. I feel like they were taking some risk with that game, being, you know, one-man army grenade launchers. You got 
other so many perks that can make you a powerhouse you know your lightweight marathon and commando to super knife into people basically there were so many things that were broken that it was balanced it just kind of worked which was crazy you know black ops one black ops two um you ask anybody they're gonna say those games were fantastic you know all the way up i even liked i love black ops three too i thought that game had some sweet movement and good gunplay um but this is basically where we're going to talk about the, the downfall. Um, I think Call of Duty hit a decline. Uh, I think Black Ops 4 was a little underrated. But, you know, MW 2019, um, that's where things started to really decline for me personally. Uh, or maybe more so like MW2. MW2 was the breaking point of never buying Call of Duty again, like the reboot of MW2. And, you know, I have a video on that one um, where we, I think we went like 84 and 14 and we lost with my team going like double negative And... The matchmaking broke that game. It just, I, if I go 84 and 14 with the most OBJ on the team and we lose by that much, I, I can't carry harder. It's um, it's not, this game is something for fun to play. It's not my job, so I'm not playing that game anymore. Um, but basically, talking too much about Call of Duty there, now we're going to kind of talk about the chronological decline from the time period that we had fun in FPS games. That being um, Iron Sight, which is what we're seeing here. So... Um, I obviously now come with a bit of an Iron Sight background. This is the game that I actually started to be like, oh, okay, I'm playing this enough. Let me actually try streaming this and, you know, see what happens. And still to this day, I never would have thought that we have a Discord with, you know, um, a good chunk over 100 people and, you know, friends that we still talk with basically on a daily basis just from Iron Sight, especially because everyone quit Iron Sight. But all the people were like, you know, well, well kind of have the same same vibe and same uh, opinion on on things as far as fps game goes so we have a, a good group going on discord as a result of iron sight um and this is where i'm bringing in the chronological decline of of fps games it's uh iron sight obviously it brought us back to that simplicity state uh in the world of hero shooters which i i can complain about a little bit later um iron sight was kind of a, a still a breath of fresh air just from its simplicity standpoint you know like you see here, there's just AR, SMG, snipers that basically ruled the meta. Um, a little bit of util. I have a full review on Iron Sight, of course, and I gave that game an 8 out of 10, but the gameplay and all that, I gave like a 9 or a 10 even. And then, of course, Netcode is this game's breaking point. I, my opinion, that's why 90% of people would leave this game because it felt so broken to play. Um, in Iron Sight, you know, I, I still think if they scrap this game entirely and somehow maybe move to a different engine and make Iron Sight 2, this game. This company has the potential to make the most fun, arguably one of the best FPS games to ever come out if they can nail down Iron Sight 2 and just scrap this. I would, I'd pay a lot of money to play Iron Sight 2. I would support that. I'd put money into the development for like a fundraiser even. Like I'd, <laughs> Iron Sight 2 would be the best FPS game to ever launch in the past 10 years. Um, that being said, Iron Sight's netcode can never get fixed. I think it has something to do with the, the engine it's running on. I don't think they have the capability of fixing that. And then that brings us on to, you know, that's Iron Sight's downfall. I think that was around maybe the 2020 mark. A um, few years later, a year later, that's where we clue into Shatterline. Shatterline comes out and has one of the most fun, um, fun gameplay in a game I've probably ever had. Um, when it originally came out, the ARs were all solid. Um, like the tier one AR had really low recoil. Tier two was more recoil, but rewards headshots for good aiming. Um, I think this one's done. Let me go to the. Oh no, we're still we are still going. Um, that's kind of all outro business. So let me rotate here. <clears throat> um, but Shadowlands gameplay was absolutely fantastic, and that's what that's what tied us over. A lot of other people, even popular YouTubers, made some content on the game. I remember watching like Jack Frags made videos on it. Um, other people made some pretty good videos on it saying it's super underrated and it, it was it was an amazing amazing game um, Guns were balanced enough the heroes like as much as I'm not a hero shooter guy It was still fun to use without feeling like it completely broke the game um, And the maps were good. That's one thing I want to touch on Ironside even the maps were so good at Ironside. Oh my gosh um, Shatterline was you know de had decent maps as well um, that game kind of fell off uh, just due to one dev decisions and in my opinion the matchmaking that people claim didn't exist um so man i'm just watching this gameplay i feel like i don't play this fast anymore but anyways um yeah we wound up just sitting in lobbies for like 20 minutes searching for a game because we couldn't find anyone um you know in a party with our you know rank or with our kd and we just would never get put into a game 
Um, but Chatterline had a, a beautiful foundation and the devs unfortunately made a lot of bad decisions. Um, ask anyone in the Shatterlight community, like we actually played, the, the netcode in that game was actually pretty good. So coming from Iron Sight, it was like, oh yeah, this is this is a breath of fresh air. Maybe we can take this competitively again. Um, and we did, we actually formed a team. We never really practiced or anything. We just kind of played. We actually did pretty well in a tournament we did considering never playing as a team before. Um, but yeah, we, we took that one a little bit more serious at the time and uh, all had a blast on that game. And of course devs, they kind of just kept buffing shotguns and buffing DMRs. Then they raised the time to kill by like two or headshots don't do anything anymore. Player base kept going down. They buffed shotguns and DMRs again. Um, they nerfed perfectly fine weapons. Like the tier one AR was a low damage, low recoil gun. They just added a bunch of recoil to it for no reason. The AK was a, a stronger kind of two tap headshot. They nerfed that gun. They nerfed the tier five AR in the game, which was a, a fast firing uh, called the Legatus. They nerfed that in the game. Um, they nerfed... Uh, what else? I, I think, was that it? Uh, the tier 4 AR is probably the best one now, because that's the only one that they didn't freaking nerf. So they just nerfed everything into oblivion, buffed shotguns, buffed, D, buffed the DMR. Um, they said shotguns are statistically balanced, and it's a skill issue if you're having issues with them. I think that's something, something along the lines that they said with that. So I don't think the devs knew what they were sitting on was that good. Oh yeah, they nerfed the movement. People did that 360 bunny hop. Uh, they nerfed that. Um, so they, they just... They drove their own game into the ground and focused on the PvE, and I don't think they realized what they had with PvP. So Iron Sight kind of died out to netcode. Shatterline, another beautiful game, died out to bad decision making. Battlefield 2042 is another one that we played and had a lot of fun on. The map design in Battlefield 2042 was horrendous in my opinion, um, though it did have after it fixed its it figured its crap out on the launch, but it had like memory leaks and all that crap. Um, nowadays, it's actually a decent game. Um, I think they nerfed a lot of things like movement and um, McKay, I think, specifically. I think they nerfed ADS, Strafe Speed, and the Grapple Hook. So they're they're nerfing stuff that's fun for the sake of what they think is balancing, I guess. Um, and it seems to kind of come back to that. All, like, all these kind of more like live service-y games where they're constantly pushing updates. Um, you don't really get the chance to evolve a meta as much, in my opinion. Um, something like, uh, you know, I, I came from a background of Super Smash Bros where Super Smash Bros on N64 or Super Smash Bros Melee, there is no, no updates, there is no patches, there is no balancing patches. So the meta has evolved so much because, um, you know, you know, you got like four or five top tier characters and they're always like one might be slightly better against the other one in different play styles, trump different play styles, and then people can practice, people can play. Um, it's not like they just practice for three years and then, you know, Fox gets nerfed or they, you know, we practice this assault rifle for two years and then all of a sudden it gets nerfed into the ground and then the meta changes. So you get the chance to really develop the meta into the highest skill possible um, when they're not constantly updating and balancing and changing. You know, of course, some things could be for the better if something's completely broken, like Model 1887s. And in my opinion, even the UMP in MW2 was a little overpowered. Um, but all these changes, you know, the meta of the game can't figure itself out by the time they're done all their patches. But anyways, yeah, Battlefield 2042, the maps kind of, <laughs> kind of, I don't, don't want to say ruined the game, but I just really didn't like the maps in that one. So we stopped playing that. Um, and that, I believe there wasn't anyone's in between that. Um, that leads us to uh, X Defiant, which is where we're at now. And we're kind of like, we had some fun with it, but we're already somewhat tired or frustrated of the game. Um, one being the spider bot is bad to deal with. Um, like spider jumps on your face. They nerfed it so you can't even crouch and shoot it off your face anymore because that was originally apparently a bug. So you just kind of have to sit there and not play the game while it's attacking your face. Um, obviously controller aim assist dominates that game and that's a whole nother topic for FPS games these days is that they seem to be kind of controller dominated. Um, when, you know, Call of Duty 4 was mouse only, Counter-Strike obviously mouse only, like some of these older games that we're playing, if you played like Quake, anything like that, controllers kind of didn't really exist, um, unless you're maybe like a Halo player, which makes sense, that's kind of a controller game anyways, um, but the aim assist on like X Defiant, you're literally at a disadvantage if you're not using a controller, um, like I switched over to a controller on, uh, X Defiant, um, and... I actually dropped a 102 kill game or 107 kill game 
on my second day. Like I bought a, the uh, controller like lengthened analog sticks one night. The next day I dropped a 107 kill game. I've since dropped an 111 kill game on X Defiant with a controller. Um, and I don't play, I play mouse. I've been playing mouse since I was, before I could speak basically. So um, to, to pick up a controller and drop 111 kills, you know, it's a little unbalanced. Um, the rotational aim assist, and that's kind of where we're at in video games too right now in general, where if the game has rotational aim assist and decent controller support, um, you're basically at a disadvantage using a mouse. And that's especially just for like one-on-one -on -one gunfights, right? And that's kind of how it is unless the game has a fast time to kill, in which case you'd probably still want to use a mouse because getting to your target is going to be more beneficial than sticking to your target in a lot of cases. Like as long as you land your three bullets, you'll get the kill. Um, we're on a controller, you know, it's going to land those for you essentially. So um, that's a big thing with X Defiant and we kind of like, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on too. There's like, you know, you got your shield guy, you got your spider guy, you got your this guy and that guy, and maybe it's just because I'm getting old, but maybe other people are with me on this. The golden era of FPS games, when we're talking like, if we're talking about like Halo 2, you know, Halo 3, Call of Duty 4, Counter-Strike 1.6, Counter-Strike Source, even CSGO at this point, um, most of these games when we're talking about them, you're going to likely have a smile on your face when talking about them or when going back and going into the loading screen where there's like literally options server list and that's pretty much it um where now it's like battle pass close these four ads uh get your Nicki minaj skin and cod and your pink gun and buy this oh you don't want to buy that here's another page try this oh don't forget the season's battle pass don't forget to claim your rewards don't forget to claim your daily missions like I i'm here to shoot things like just get me in a match let me play some call of duty i'd rather honestly a game menu just be an excel spreadsheet at this point just play button you know options server list and you know maybe if you have like your loadouts and crap have that at the main menu too but that's pretty much it um that's <laughs> maybe i'm just old but that, i want that simplicity factor back and i'm saying that that's how we could make that's why i'm saying, saying iron sight 2 would be the best game in the past decade for fps games if they actually scrapped iron sight and pulled this off because their simplicity was what's keeping me like oh I, I i'm gonna you know after work hop in a few matches of iron sight i know exactly what i'm getting into and it's you know um not necessarily a form of like escapism playing video games but it's something that like you hop on with your you hop on with the boys, you play a few rounds, and you know your 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 day is just better. That's just how it is. You're all playing a fun game, and now it's like we're playing these games, and we're we're just you're just dealing with crap, and it's like it it becomes less of a fun thing and more of a I need to you know um, how do I word this not figure out, but I need to deal with the like we have I have less patience for stupidity to these days. That's what it is. So <laughs> when you're dealing with spider bots jumping on your face, when you're dying to things that, you know, um, are not related to gun skill or even map awareness in a lot of cases in any way. And it's just that, you know, Timmy aimed at you with the controller and laid a shield down while you were shooting at him and, you know, he killed you. It's like, yeah, good play on him, I guess, because the game gave him all those tools. But really, it's like, you know, any other <laughs> any other old game that's a kill for me um so I, i'm saying like we just need to bring back a little bit of the uh simplicity in these fps games like we're all going big time hero shooter big um you know uh like i won't say interactive maps but like yeah ma convoluted con congested how do I want to say this uh, as far as like maps and crap go? Like bring me back like some bait, like if we're making an arcade shooter, give us that three lane system, you know, nothing that's like, you know, you're, you're dying from rooftop in the fifth lane that peeks through a window in a crack and then kills you from over there type of thing. You're taking peck shots at you from a head glitch on the other side of the map because there's visibility of it. Stuff like that. Um, just like, I think that's why I like Call of Duty 4 so much too is its simplicity. Iron Sight, I love its simplicity. And again, maybe this is just me getting old and, you know, me just wanting that simplicity factor back. But every game, if you're with me, you can say something in the comments. But every game now feels like a wild, wacky circus of a hero shooter and not a give me an M4 carbine, give me an AK-47. Um, let me, you know, take all the skills and, and aim and, and stuff that I've learned and, and practice over the years and not have the game play against me. But have, you know, I, I want to play the game, but the game's playing me. 
these days. And that's how it feels, especially in MW2 when you drop 80 kills and 14 deaths and, and lose. The game's playing me at that point. So it's like, what do you, Activision, what do you want me to do if I'm losing those games? You know what I mean? Um, where we need to bring back dedicated server list. I think, I think that's where this also is kind of going to as well. Matchmaking in games is a, a casino. Um, it, it, it really is. So I want to say like bring back just a server list. Let me pick what ping and what map on um, what mode I'm playing on. Um, maybe in ranked, have your matchmaking system going. Um, but give me a server list and let's simplify. I, I want a simplified FPS game. Like right now we're actually off of FPS entirely. And that's where I'm saying the chron chronological downcline of all of these games coming from Counter-Strike to, you know, if you played Call of Duty 4 as your first or Call of Duty 2 even was a really good game. Um, I played a little bit, uh, maybe a couple of rounds of Call of Duty 2. Um, and the simplicity of these games is, is where they shine. Um, and now it's just, everything's a circus. I feel like I'm playing some circus rigged casino FPS game, right? Um, Shatterline was like a little bit at the edge of that, but still a very fun like, and fast game to play. So we were still pretty hooked on it for a while. Um, but yeah, that kind of sums up where we're at. We just need a more simple um, FPS game that we can all hop on, enjoy, good gunplay, maybe, you know, not, not too crazy of perks, not too crazy of, of maps, like just some simple arcade shooter. And no one has done that in years because everyone's on the ba bandwagon of, of hero shooters, right? So um, that's what I'm saying. We've just hit a chronological down, uh, decline of FPS games. And right now I'm playing the first Descendant because I'm done with FPS for now. And I love playing the first Descendant right now. It's such a fun, just go on, shoot things with your with the boys, farm some resources, get more OP, do boss fights. I love the first Descendant. Um, it's been <laughs> maybe, I don't think I'll like stream it or make videos on it because I don't think you can really differentiate yourself in games like that. Like obviously... Um, games like Iron Sight, we're doing some fast PvP, making cool plays, getting cool kills, getting highlights, getting penta kills, drop shot, 180s. Like you're you're doing cool things, but games like First Descendant, there's nothing really like. It's like, what are you really gonna watch? Um, but maybe I'll still make some some video on it at one point in the future. I don't want to kill it because every game I review winds up dying. Um, but yeah, I th I still think like there's potential to have really good FPS games, but everyone has. Uh, maybe like obviously people enjoy these games, but a lot I feel like are just not going back to the formula that we all know works. Um, and they're you know what's this one that came out recently or was coming out called like Concord or something? The game looked like a disaster. Um, I haven't even seen full gameplay of it, but just from what I did see, it's like why are we even making these games? Like a hero shooter, let Overwatch just rule that area and. <laughs> Um, I still want more hero shooters, man. Everything we play is a freaking hero shooter. So Delta Force Hawk Ops is coming out. That looks kind of enticing. I'm probably going to play some, some of that. I hope that the classes aren't too, um, extra if we want to say that, if I'm a white Starbucks girl. Um, but I, I hope that the classes aren't too extra like that, where it's like one guy's going to just be completely OP, that type of thing. Um, yeah, you know, I just want... A little bit of simplicity to FPS game, so I'll probably be playing that one. Maybe I'll actually make a video on that one. I think uh, playtest is July 18th. I had signed up for it in the past, so as long as I get access, maybe I'll make a video or two on that. And my thoughts, um, X Defiant is in the very back pocket for now. I don't know if we'll be playing that more. Um, but yeah, this is just I just kind of want to make a random video summarizing the past, you know, X amount of time I've been kind of AFK from YouTube uh, and Twitch. Uh, I've just been playing First Descendant living life, um, playing games off of stream just because I never can really commit to st sitting in my chair. I was kind of maybe have to go up and help um, if the baby wakes up or something like that, put her back to sleep. But that's also been a nice part of life lately. Um, but yeah, it seems like we've, if you're with me, maybe say something in the comment that, you know, what was your golden era of FPS game? Where are we at now? And what what do you find better? Like, do you, do you think our FPS games now are, are better than they used to be? Am I just old? Um, but yeah, that's pretty much going to summarize this one. I've talked for a long time now. Holy crap, 24 minutes. So uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next video whenever that may be. And hope you guys have all been well. Bye.